All right, so what we're doing today is remapping the sky color of this image, uh, or the remapping the sky color of this image, rather, to be closer to this image. Um, and so we've taken a measurement of the RGB values of this image, which are listed here. They are 37, 89, and 176. And we're going to go in and um, add these values of red, green, and blue, uh, remap the values of this sky to be closer to that sky. And it's really pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do first, that was from our practice session, is go in here and click the area that I want to modify, the primary area, which is here, okay? Um, spot number two, we'll go ahead and throw away spot number that one. So here's the area that we want to modify. And we're going to go ahead and make a curve. And the curve shows us a composite of all the channels. Um, but we want to actually adjust every channel individually. So we could go through and simply click here one by one by one and plot a point on each channel. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command shift, click once on this area and it will automatically map the point in the brightness value of that particular channel. So what we're going to do is modify the output of each channel and we're going to modify the output to match that of the last image. So um, on this last image here, bring this forward, we had a value of 37, 89, 176 in this area. And those will be our new output values on the other image. OK, so I'm going to bring back the curve. Here, we're going to start with the red. And the red value was what class? 37, right? So we're going to start out with a value of 37. I just want to roll over this and make sure I'm in the right spot here. Yep, that's right. So my new output will be 37. And you can say, see that that reduces the red in the image quite a lot. The green value we said in the last image was 89, so we're going to remap the output of this image to 89. You can see it already getting really saturated up there. And then the blue value of the last image was 176, so we're going to remap this to 176. And if we look in our info palette here, you can see the uh, old set of numbers, what they were before, and the new set of numbers. And we, we've gone ahead and we've made major adjustments to this image to, to map the sky to be closer to the last image. Let's just look at that last image. And let's arrange them one up. And if we zoom in, you can see that we did a really good job. They, they seem to match really, really well. Um, and so if we print these, those should be fairly similar hues. Now the thing that we are seeing is what's happening if we turn off this curve, what's happening that we don't like? There's a cast in the building. I actually like a bit more of the density of this shift. But the grass is too blue and the buildings are too blue. So what we can do is we can mask out. And, and in the last video, as a shortcut, because we have more to mask out, it's probably going to actually be quicker if we command I and invert the mask. We mask everything out. It'll probably be quicker if we actually paint in the adjustment. So I've got my white paintbrush here, and I can go ahead and paint in the adjustment. This, you'll probably have to move in on this image, you know, and do a bit of um, the pen tool and some masking if you want it to be perfect. That's what this image is going to require. And we can fill that top area with white. And because, you know, we, basi we have some basic blues, we should be able to get it pretty close so that when we hang it on the wall with the other image, it'll mesh. All right? 
So I'm going to leave it in a normal blend mode, probably, and play with the opacity. Let's see when we get to the end. So if you really want to do a bang up job, you would make a much um, more particular selection than I just did. But we're just doing this quickly for the sake of demonstration. I'm going to invert, and I'm going to fill with, fill with white this image area, right? And that doesn't look very good because I didn't do a very good job of selecting it. But remember that I can also feather this mask and blend it in pretty well. And it looks fairly natural. OK? And then after seeing that last example, I feel like I want to reload the selection by command clicking, invert the selection, and add another curve, which would actually kind of darken not so much the shadows but the midtones to bring out a little more detail you see that so this is a plus this is a composite channel selection plus detail all the way around all channels if you don't want the color to be affected remember you can change it to luminosity and then this is our color shift sky If we turn this on and off, you can see a big difference in the sky. It's, there's more color added because the numbers were higher, so we actually saturated the sky and shifted the color at the same time. All right, so try that and see if you can get it to work. So on all three of your images, this works really well across the board with skin tones, uh, and it works well with you know areas like sky and um, and uh, grass, any, any area on the image that you're trying to match. If this building showed up in every picture and they were very, very particular about its color, then you could match the RGB mixes across the board um, of this particular building. All right, give that a shot and let me know how it works out.